Now, after moving player one, we're gonna call a similar macro to move player two. So down here at the end of the macro, we're gonna say move player two or call move player two. And player two can be the computer, of course, or it can be a second player using some other keys in the keyboard. So in that case, we will need to bind keys for the second player. So we could actually copy all of this into a new module. And this is if you want to have a two players game and play with someone else from the same keyboard. We would call this keys two, for example. So we would have key one and keys two. And I'm just pasting here the same that we have in keys. Now we just need to update. So for example, let's, let's use um, A for left. I'm not sure which are the keys you use here. So let's say A for left, D for right, W up and X down. And we will have to call this uh, a two. So we use the same macros, but we rename it to with a two for player two. And also the variable, so call increment two, is gonna be now the, um, and so on. So I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna run this because I'm not gonna be able to play two players myself, I think. But I think you you get the point. And this is going to be bind keys too as well. And of course, we need to free the keys later. Those keys, not these ones. So that will be that. And that's free keys too. And what we need to do in the main module now is we have to bind keys too as well. Okay. And yes, we need to add here, declare here as public column increment two and row increment two. Now we would use a similar macro than this one here. And we would rename everything to move player two, column increment two, and so on. So I'm not going to do that, but I think you get the point if you want to build a game with um, the possibility to, to have two players. But I'm going to continue to create the game against the computer. So for now, I will comment this. And my move player two macro down here It's going to use an algorithm to move the computer. And this can be as sophisticated as you want, but to make it simple, let's start saying that um, the column increment 2 for the computer is going to start being plus 1. So it's going to start moving to the right. And we can use something similar to what we've used for player 1. So actually, it's going to be the same um, condition. So if the column is greater than two and the column two is um, less than the, the right edge and uh, row two is between two and 40 and also the interior is black, then we can also copy this other piece of code here and say the column two is gonna increment by the column two increment, which we start, which we have set to plus one at the start of the game. And the row two is gonna increment by that, which is zero. And this is gonna be red. And of course in row two, and column two. And else, yeah, it's gonna 
stop the timer and here's where you win yeah but now um, we need to add some additional logic here to make the computer move and we're gonna create some kind of random move um, so change direction or slash algorithm and here you can add whatever algorithm you want to to create the the movement of the computer so we're gonna have a let's say let's call it a turn variable which is gonna increment and we need to declare at the module level so I'm gonna add it up here dim turn as an integer and if turn is greater than let's say 9 then we're gonna change the movement and we're gonna do it randomly so let's add some randomize and set the direction is gonna be an integer of random R&D times 4 so a number between 1 and 4 and if direct is and if direction is 1 then then the column increment 2 is going to be 1 else if direct is 2 then the column increment 2 is going to be minus 1 um, and so on yeah and if it's 3 we're going to change the row increment to it's going to be 1 else if direct is 4 it's going to go down and if so this is going to change and let me also um, end the if statement for the for this one here so that comes here and if and here we can add a commentary this is moving the computer so that's something very simple and it doesn't add any challenge to the game but I invite you to download the file from my blog and see the algorithm used to move the computer over there. So it's a bit more complicated and it, it, it requires really more code, um, of course. But let's see how this works for now. And then we want to set turn again to zero. So every 10 times 200 milliseconds, every two seconds, it's going to make a turn. And I'm going to make here a correction. That's a stop timer. And of course, that's row increment 2 and column increment 2 and the other thing we want to do is to of course set when we set the column increment to 1 we have to set the row increment 2 to 0 and the same here row increment 2 is 0 while when we change the row increment then we have to sell the column increment 2 to 0 that's the same we were doing in the other module for the player 1 um, right column increment 2 is 0 and the other thing we want to add to this algorithm is if the direction is 1 and is not moving in the opposite direction so and the column increment 2 is different than minus 1 then it can move to the to the right and that's the same logic we use for player one. So now here, if the direction is two, which is going to the left, and the call increment two is different than one, then we can move to the left. And the same for um, the vertical direction. So direction is three, and the row increment two is different than minus one, we can move down and the same here okay so let's see how that works if we click start computer starts moving I'm also moving and he is actually changing randomly the direction until he he hits the edge so we win but that was very easy right um, you can keep um, adding to the algorithm, you know, to make it more complicated, of course. Um, 
and for example we could easily add another condition to check if it's gonna hit and then turn to any of the other directions right um, so go ahead and download the file and read the post in my blog and you can see more about that so that's how we create the game of throne in excel using vva macros thanks for watching